We're back. It's a new us. It's a new you. And it's a whole new year, 2020. Welcome to the first, wait, second new episode of Dude Soup. Didn't look like you were looking yeah, at the wrong camera. Yeah, it looked like you hit the wrong one. You're you definitely again? looking at the wrong camera. You were doing this one. You want to do that again? Oh, yeah, because I was looking at the numbers. I'm high. So high on DayQuil right now, guys. You wouldn't believe it. I don't think we have time to do another, Omar. I'm afraid. No. I think we got to keep okay. that one. That's right. fine. I thought it was perfect. Man, it I was pretty good. I was, I was laying in bed this morning thinking, like, I'm dead. Like, I feel terrible. I, I was on all sorts of cold medicine. Mm-hmm. I get this terrible thing. But then I thought of Elise sitting here alone. Doing mm-hmm. the podcast by herself. She would love that. Are you kidding me? Oh, really? That, that's why I came in. Makeup oh. and quotes. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to an all new episode of Dude Soup. We're back. I'm joined by Elise, James, and John Smith. How y'all doing? Pretty I'm good. good. How, are good. How are you? Good. Good. I mean, I got, oh, no, you're not good. <laughs> actually, I do have some, I have some questions for you guys about holiday stuff. We, we hung out briefly, but I want to kind of know what you guys did since mm-hmm. we all kind of went our separate ways, like at the end of Ocean's Eleven. Uh-huh. Before we get there, uh, tell you about our fine sponsors. we got Bespoke. You can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code DUDE. Also, Stitch Fix. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash dudesoup and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. Speaking of your box, James. Yeah. So I'm going to work my way backwards. Mm-hmm. We all went, like I said, we all did the the Danny Ocean thing, went our separate ways. Third little loon playing in the background. Beautiful. At the mm-hmm. Bellagio. Mm-hmm. So what, last weekend we all went to medieval, medieval times together? Yes. That was great. We did. But what did everyone do before that? Uh, I slept a lot. Okay. I did Good a lot vacation. of sleeping. You, yeah. ever, you know that scene when Jenny comes home? Forrest Gump. And Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, this is there another character named Jenny? I don't think so. Um, when Jenny comes home to Forrest and he's like, oh, I'm so excited to have you back. And he just like keeps checking in on her. And she just, she just yeah. did sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and that's the whole thing. That was me. Yeah. That was me. Uh, apparently the so, last year was me basically living through the 70s. Do you, do you think for it? Oh, that was the 80s by that time, right? Well, but she, her, her worst times were mm-hmm. the 70s. In Forrest's mind, though, do, do you think he's like, she partied so hard, she caught up on no. that sleep? He thought she walked <laughs> far. Or Instead something. of like, she was dying of AIDS. He didn't think about how she was getting rammed over mm-hmm. and over again. Yeah, but he got in there 50th. He got in there later. What do you mean? Like Forrest. he had sex with her later? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, I they mean, didn't have sex. Yeah, they did. Forrest doesn't. No, mm. he did. There's he a died a virgin. They showed it. He, no, because he has a kid. What? He has a kid at the end. His name's Forrest. And <laughs> if the kid's name is Forrest and the, his name is Forrest, they must be related. They cut out the scene where he goes, you were named after a KKK member. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They did cut that out. They also cut out the scene where Child Protective Services comes like, comes in and says, this man is incapable of raising you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> he just he throws a lot of cash at him and <laughs> gets into Apollo 13 and flies away. At least I know you guys aren't conjoined at the hip, but I assume. What did I do? I know you watched a four-hour cut of The uh, Hobbit. Four and a I half. Did. Uh, you know, I got some lunches, breakfast with friends that I don't get to see always because of our demanding work schedule, uh, and the 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 fact that L.A. You know, if you live on one side of the city, you're never going to see someone that lives on the other side. So I was able to do that, which is nice. Um, on Christmas, with some friends, watched um, Best Friend from Heaven. Chris Christopherson <gasps> movie where he plays a Wait, dog. You finally watched it? It's on Amazon Prime. John, wow. you introduced that movie to me. Did you watch it? I have not watched it yet. Oh, so w- I, we were concerned that the trailer, which is hilarious, Chris Christopherson voices a dog that gets hit by a car and then goes to heaven and then comes back. I'm back and I can talk. Well, yeah. then his owner doesn't get married. She was about to get they married. They were going to get married. They and they put don't. it off because the dog died. Would never um, happen. <laughs> the movie, we were like, okay, well, it could be one of those situations where it's actually just a boring, bad, it's not a good, bad movie, but no, it delivered. Free on really? Amazon Prime, I would highly okay. recommend. It was great. It's not free. Also, um, also, we were watching it and we kept waiting for the speech about God, and it like they would come close, but then never actually go into it. But I guess the version we watched is a new edited version oh. called Best Friend from Heaven, where the there's an alternate titled one called God's Best Friend. Because the bride who doesn't get married, her father is a preacher. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of interactions with that father, but Mm. he never actually... Right. Yeah. Secular it's, cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's like secular, a it's, secular-ish cut. I, we we did, uh, back in the day, uh, John and I did that whole review of the Christian Netflix. Mm-hmm. And there's a similar sort of kind of like a tone with Christian movies and porno where mm-hmm. there should be a normal scene instead of fucking, there's a part where they talk about God mm-hmm. or something like that where you're like, yeah. oh, this feels like they're about to do something where they're like, hey, how you doing? 
Can we tell you about Jesus? And he's like, it's like, <laughs> where's this coming from? Yeah, they're like, delivering a pizza. It, yeah. Extra cheese, by the way. Can I tell you about Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's strange. Uh, another big Hollywood news. I was I was out to breakfast somewhere and I saw John Bernthal. Is that his name? Yeah, the Punisher. The Punisher. Oh, formerly the Punisher. And he seemed like Still, so, I didn't obviously didn't recast. go up to him. I don't really look, if someone, especially he was with his kids and his family. And I'm, I'm not going to go up and be like did Punisher. His, did punish he have his dog me. for E3? <laughs> no, oh. but he seemed like I mean his interaction that I was very much listening to. Uh, was seemed very sweet. Mm-hmm. You had a conch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I had my eat my horn yeah. that I take with me. How was uh, how was your break, John? It was good. I did also did a lot of sleeping. Um, I watched Freaks and Geeks undeclared in like four seasons of The Office and like the thirty part. movies. Wow. So yeah, They're not uncut gems. I guess you could say it was a little productive. Yeah. Do you see Little Women? <laughs> no. What what name? I didn't of the go anywhere. I didn't leave my apartment for two weeks. I grubhubbed and Seven Eleven nowed everything. Did you watch Animal World? What is Animal World? I just found it. I went deep diving on Netflix, which is where you don't watch the things that they refer to you. You write it in names of other movies in the search, and then you go through that mm-hmm. list. And I found this movie called Animal World, which is a Chinese film about this guy who is taken in by loan sharks. Mm-hmm. Dead collectors, oh, and then okay. taken in an oil tanker in the middle of the ocean, and forced to compete in paper, rock, scissors like battle royale. <gasps> Where the animals? This was not a play. dream. No. Okay. It was real, but it's also it's shot like a. I'm trying to think, like an action movie, like a Fast and Furious. Wait, is it a documentary? No, no. Oh, okay. That- it's it's, <laughs> but it's shot like a fast, like a Fast and Furious. It's a nonsense. Good question. I mean, it could. There's probably. Oh. That's probably might be a real, but it's story. as close as we'll get to like a live James, action Yu-Gi-Oh. That is so exciting. I doubt anyone else's holiday could top that level of excitement and interest. So we might as well just move on. We can move on. No, right? I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want you don't want to talk. I. Oh, oh you don't want to talk. Oh. About. We're Mr. World Traveler. Yeah. We went to Jess and I went to Costa Rica. I'm not. I didn't want to talk about wow. it. Wow. Well, you made what us did talk you about do? Our Lie in lives. hammocks and drink <laughs> well, alcohol. Well, there was there was the part. I went. I, you did. The alcohol, I know you I did. saw them. The I saw the posts. Stop looking. <laughs> Stay out of my life. Stop tagging me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we went. It was a quick trip, but um, you were talking earlier about like, oh, living in LA. I live on the west side, mm-hmm. and my friend lives in Burbank, and it's taking me 45 minutes to get there. Uh, I have a new appreciation for the congested roads of Los Angeles after being in Costa Rica, where John knows because he's been there. I've been there. You missionary it, there? No. Uh, <laughs> I visited my brother. Okay. Who had a mental breakdown and had and traveled Central America. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's cool. I also had a mental breakdown driving <laughs> through Central America. Uh, nothing but windy roads, uh, four cylinder stick shift going up and down and. Just if a bus breaks down, you're yeah. stuck going uphill Why and traveling. Did you get a well, stick shift? You rented a car? Because the first car I tried to rent for like an insane amount of money, because we were also doing this over the holiday break, which was a bad idea uh, because everything just price gouging oh, yeah, is out the ass. Um, the only car available was uh, a car I've never heard of before uh, <laughs> from a country I've never is heard of. It's called of. like the Interceptor or something. <laughs> yeah. like. It was like a Perot or something uh, like that. Yeah, oh, but, a Peugeot? No, not a uh, Peugeot. Oh. No, it was like a it was like a Korean four cylinder. I saw a couple others on the road. I'm like, well, hey, you know, friend. that's what happened to Uma mm-hmm. when Tarantino made her drive that Jeep or whatever mm-hmm. in that unsafe stunt in yep. Kill Bill yeah. Volume and then she, Two. And then she crashed, and he said, "Let me see your feet because yeah. he's weird. are the feet okay? He yeah. went, are the feet okay?" <laughs> and he goes, he goes, "That's a movie in. idea." Uh, <laughs> only in the deleted scenes of Death Roof, but yeah. So like after, dry, it takes I don't know something like four and a half hours to go from one part of Costa Rica to the other, which wow. is, you end up going about 20 miles. Oh. And you're just, it's a lot of like uphill. Just kind of. Sounds fun. It was very stressful. Um, beautiful, beautiful little country though. But man, yeah, being in traffic in LA, I'm like, this goes forward. It just moves. And also it's not a bunch of bumpy, rocky There's roads. There's infrastructure. Th- yeah, strange, right? It's there. It's, yeah, yeah well. there's not a, a howler monkey coming at you or digging into your uh, hotel room in the middle of the night but or an iguana. Just kind There of are around. monkeys. There yeah, are, there are many monkeys. They don't, they don't howl. howl. They're silent killers. You ever so see a monkey hump another monkey? Yes. Okay, good. That's that's the key. That means you really had a true mm. wildlife experience. Yeah. And then I think I got food poisoning towards the end. Probably salmonella. I don't know. It's all good now. Silmarillion. So it's pronounced Sorry. silmarillion. Uh, <laughs> there, there was... <laughs> there's, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, we 
we went out to this place, uh, Capos is like this beautiful like bay in Costa Rica. Familiar. And uh, <laughs> we went out on a, a catamaran is one of those things like, oh, we'll take you out. You can go snorkeling and you have lunch and all that stuff. And partway through, I remember my stomach was just oh, dying. No. I was like, oh, my God. But they had bathrooms on board. So oh, I was like, okay, totally fine. God. Jess was also, joking. Surrounded by a bathroom. Well, well, Jess was like, go in the water. I'm like, no, the boat has bathrooms. I'll use the bathroom. Also, is the water clear? Like you're like yeah. if, you go, if, you, if you go in LA like a lot of if most seasons in LA you oh, go you swim out into the water you can shit city. anywhere you want no one yeah. will even see the log floating in the but, water but if this it'd just be beautiful blue and just brown <laughs> it, 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 it's it, a it, sperm it, whale it was it was it was the smoke from Ferngully inside of me like ready mm-hmm. to come out so I go to the bathroom um, at some point the boat's been docked for a little bit like the battery died or something so they're like they're trying to get another battery from another boat so we're just kind of sitting out on the water. Uh, so I go to the bathroom, I'm like, oh boy, it's killing me. Let all go. Flusher doesn't work. And I go, okay. But it's like one of those like industrial toilets where it's just a hole. Yeah, and it kind of goes in. It just has to open this yeah. spot. And I go, it's fine. Like no one will care, but I, I still like close the door and kind of like close the hinge. Like, mm-hmm. okay, maybe let people know not to go in there. And then later I'm up there, I'm up on top, and Jess is like, I heard some guys down there, and they're like, they could smell the toilet next door, and they said, that one's ruined. Don't go inside. <laughs> <laughs> a woman screamed and then a vase hits the ground. And I, just, I just looked at her. I was like, it was me. <laughs> I, I was not. I, I was expecting the toy spill to flush. It's ruined. Yeah. I, well, it probably flushed before you went. Yeah. You ruined an you, industrial you, yeah. toilet. You destroyed it. He's uh, here. The captain is nauseated. Yeah, we yeah. cannot return to can, shore. Can anyone drive this boat back yeah. because of my terrible smelling? Don't drive a boat. Steer a what boat. Do you do it? Oh. Sail. There were no sails on it though. It's yes. all motorized. Yes, exactly. It's like it's like when you shoot on videotape, but you call it filming a movie. Mm-hmm. Right. You shoot on videotape. Sometimes. You told me. You told me all, you were going to use all. Get rid of all that Super 8 film well, that I handed you. It's I coming say, back. <laughs> it's vintage now. I say tape a movie. I say you guys want to go tape a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here's cool. a, here's, they know we're making it on tape. Here's a brief, here's a brief aside. Um, when I moved to LA, obviously I was just trying to get a job anywhere and just wanted to be anywhere within the industry. It didn't matter. So one of the places I applied was at this place called Pro 8 Millimeter in Burbank. And um, it's basically just a eight millimeter shop. They they mm. uh, sell film and then they also process film. On this is in, millimeter. this is 1982. Right? <laughs> no, oh. this is like 2006. <laughs> right, not exactly yesterday, but not too long ago. It's kind of like how vinyl's still around. There are still mm-hmm. there are enthusiasts that still use this stuff. And and, and yeah. I went, so I went, and it was literally just for a position, just like checking orders and processing orders. And then they were like, oh, well, maybe we'll train you, and then you can learn how to do film processing. And sometimes we have editing and stuff. It's like, oh well, it's close enough. And then. They called and they were like, well, we can only offer you this much. And I was like, eh, that's fine. And I had something else. So then I think we mutually agreed not to do it. They probably didn't want me anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, I've had countless jobs at countless different places. Places I've worked at have completely gone under that don't exist anymore. Um, lots, of, tons of layoffs, mm-hmm. been through sure, tons of layoffs. Yeah. We were in Burbank not too long ago and drove down the street. Pro 8 millimeter. Yep. Still wow. there. Expanded into the building next to it. <laughs> really? I would probably have. I would have had better job security if I had accepted that job, and I'd be doing great. I might be mm-hmm. CEO. Well, they might be the only. Well, I think they're yeah. probably they're one of, of them. But I mean, when uh, they bought the other one, and that's why they expanded. When I was at Invisible Children, that was we always took an eight millimeter camera and would shoot B roll with it, and then send it up somewhere in LA. Yeah. Don't know where. Maybe it was probably, probably eight millimeter, millimeter, and they'd send back like a DVD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I so I took a film class in college. Oh, humble brag. Well, community college, <laughs> but double humble. <laughs> I learned about was it they call it telecining when mm-hmm. they're like, oh, this is where we take film, we put it digital so you can edit it. Uh, that was my film teacher projecting the film on a wall and yeah, then yeah. shooting it with a camera. <gasps> <Yeah, laughs> no, that's what they all do. Yeah, that's really? what we did. It's, oh, jeez. Because it costs a shit ton of money to scan in digital and process yeah. that. I think we, he the original plan was to do that, and then the guy who was going to do it for him fell through. So he said, "We have another idea." And he, one of the kids who worked there had a, a 1080p, like very early gen Sony camera. He was like, 
hey, that's good. Let's shoot everyone's stuff on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. That's that's what we yeah. did too. We we did 16 millimeter films in school. There's not much difference. The same thing. Not much difference from a college film school and how you get a Russian yeah. copy of the Avengers Endgame. No, it's the same. When I was in yeah. middle school, I had a computer and I had a camcorder that had FireWire, but my computer wasn't strong enough to be able to import the video. So what I would do is I would shoot on the Hi8 camera and then connect it to the VCR and I'd press record yeah. and then stop. And, and that was basically oh, yeah. I was live, live editing, editing yeah. onto mm-hmm. the VHS yep. tape. Never I've done worked. that. Never worked. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure at some, we all had a VHS or camcorder mm-hmm. at some point. Like one of us, I'm sure at any given time went, wait, if I, if I stop filming at this part yeah. and then I start filming here, I shot a kung fu movie. Yeah. Like a whole kung fu movie that way. Yeah. Except the action choreography. <laughs> I was like, all right, we need to stop. I'm going to hit stop as soon as you make contact with yeah. his fist, mm-hmm. with his head, and then we're gonna, I'm going to cut to a wide, and then we'll start there, and then you yeah. pull it back. Inevitably, though, there's always a shot where they're looking at the camera. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I def- I, my friend and I, she, her, uh, she had a, a camcorder, and we made a stupid, like, video and, and her like around her house. It was, like, escaped from her house. Where, and and uh, there's a part where I just I do whatever, and then I go, cut. <laughs> that. That's uh, how you did it. The one I remember was, uh, and this is a specific reference that you'll get. Uh, it was called Two Gay Ninjas, A Dog, and a Pizza Place. Okay, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The show. With Ryan like Reynolds. Show. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, right. I got it now. Yeah. I thought it was uh, Three Ninja Kickback. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my gosh. Uh, technology is so obsolete, it seems yeah. like. It seems like all these technologies that we were exposed to then that we grew up with are just worthless now. Just throw it in the trash except for Pro 8 millimeter. Thanks, well, for, it thanks for mentioning better? that, James. Yeah, because uh, CES is actually going on right now. This is one of my favorite things of the year. I just realized this. I just realized why they do it in January. I remember because we'd always be on a break, and then mm-hmm. they'd be like, CES is happening, and so like almost immediately you'd be like, News, all this stuff. It's because it's a new year. They want you to make it feel like it's the future. Oh, yeah. And we're oh. also depressed. Oh. I, I was going to say, I thought it was because everyone comes back from the holidays and they're depressed. And this well, that's, is what, like, that's what the porno convention is next door. Something to yeah. live for. And they, I thought they it was because everyone... you to, into buying all that old stuff for holiday gifts and then they put you all the new stuff in that's front true. of you. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, all the things you bought. I don't know about you guys. I make my Christmas list in January. So, like normally, right now you're yeah. making it for next year. So, you're year? putting a yeah. foldable phone on your Christmas list yep. right now? Dear John, this is what I want. <laughs> You're my dear John. Actually, have you guys seen the the Razer phone? Yeah. The, like the foldable. It actually yeah. looks good. I think. I think it actually looks like. Lots. A, I mean, here's the thing. I've never seen a phone. I'm like, that looks like shit. <laughs> I, mean, I have. They all are just things like that. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Oh. But anything but, that can but, get but, smaller. I miss my little chocolate. I miss it. <laughs> what? <laughs> LG chocolate. Your chocolate. Oh, I miss chocolate. I know, I know you just missed I know what you're talking about because I think Jess had that phone and she left it in a movie theater. Oh. <laughs> and I remember being like, I remember that was, it was She's how like, cool. I left my chocolate in there. There was, that's sort of, I guess, where we are too with technology where, like you're saying, James, everything's just a rectangle. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you make the rectangle look bad? But with the foldable phones, is like, how cool can you make the fold? Until there's some crazy new change, we're just iterating on the same form yeah. factor. And now, like, the, the Razer flip phone is sort of a mix of mm-hmm. the two. I, I find it interesting. I, I do appreciate that you can have something bigger because like some like sometimes I think, oh, maybe I should get a bigger phone. Mm-hmm. But then I like I, the phone that I have now barely fits in my pocket. But if it was the phone the size that I have now that when I needed more, I could fold out into more. Then the it's the like, problem oh, right now, though, is. You, it's still this thick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're like, I'll just put it in my fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little too a much. Second wallet. That's why I still wish, still wish that we could get, um, Seinfeld scripts for like, what would the Seinfeld script be where Jerry gets a new phone mm-hmm. and Elaine looks at it and she goes, No, you can't. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. What, uh, yeah, and there's it's just like a shot of it where it's it doesn't fit in his pants. Yeah, and it, yeah. It, it's funny. Mindy Kaling tweeted about that recently where she's like, I, I, sometimes I wish The Office was still going because I would have loved to do Michael Scott's take on yeah. like this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. All sitcoms are the same. Just write a new sitcom with Seinfeld in mind. Bob's Burgers is just The Simpsons, but in the essence of The Simpsons when it was good. Warm oh, Ford. 
I would. Before we <laughs> jump into all the CES news, uh, I don't know if you want to pull the link up there, Omar, but the PS5 dev kit controller leaked. Ooh. This is from Patrick. Uh, his name's all scratched out, so I'm not sure what it is. Because oh my god, Ooh, he's what a rebel, so Patrick. Genuine, well, genuine he is a. About this. He, he claims to be a uh, cleaner. At a university, I assume he says occasionally. At He's U. a hero, is what yeah. he like a, is. Wait, like a so that's definitely mafia cleaner. That's definitely the PS5 dev kit, yeah. which people point out. And so the controller is looking a little thicker, a little uh, mad catsy. I don't. That's what uh, I want. Here's mm. I. It's it's just a personal complaint. Everyone loves that controller, so I know this is something with me, but I can't. It. I'm coming in horizontally. Mm-hmm. Xbox controllers. It feels like my thumbs are in a straight line when I'm trying to use the sticks. Mm-hmm. PlayStation controllers, it feels like my thumbs go horizontal. So, like, when I was playing Spider-Man and I'm just, like, swinging through the city, swinging through the city, at a certain point, I'd always have to do this thing where I go, like, and then readjust my thumb because it was sliding off the top of the analog stick. I do that sometimes. It's just, like, I, I like, have to do this thing. I never have to do it on I have an easier time holding the PlayStation controller than I do because my thumb is warped. So, maybe, yeah. It is a more popular console. for, For mutants. I like the symmetry. I still think the uh, the Switch Pro controller might be my favorite one. So dang, but it's, uh, I like it a lot. And the new the, the Elite Xbox Elite. The, the new they send us those new Elite ones. I like the weight of the Elite. Yeah, yeah. it feels like a like a car. Yeah, <laughs> it's so heavy. You guys tried Stadia um, controller? It's, so, it's like it's that. So, yeah. It feels so cheap. <laughs> like you, you pull the controller, it goes. Yeah, but it has the power of all games inside it, Adam. <laughs> Man. So the logo. Oh yeah, and then uh, this this. So we didn't really get a chance to talk about it, but when we were at the Game Awards, they announced both consoles. The, well, they we got to see what the next right. Xbox is going to look. They've already like. said that's just that was just a render. Of course, yeah, so, yeah. it's like, always a render. Yeah, yeah, but it still shows where their minds at is yeah. vertical, which mm-hmm. I don't think any of us saw or like, were thinking like, oh, or God, any furniture designers. Or- nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, I don't know because like I. It might look nice next to all your stuff, but then um, I want one that's flat that slides behind the television. That oh you yeah, don't have like to a look digital at. antenna. Yeah, or just like it that doesn't exist in a space. I want one mm-hmm. that's green and looks like grass, oh. so I can just hide it in the grass and oh. then just run a cable, and then I don't even you, need to think. You about it. you joke, but Google just release their new Wi-Fi routers or whatever. They redesign them. Oh, to look like lamps and stuff? Because the the consensus was, they're so ugly. And they're like, but they're Wi-Fi. You need to see them. And they oh, said, yeah. well, then make them beautiful. Yeah, like mm. our router is like behind, like we have it on a, on a shelf. Mm. And then there's like a, a picture, a framed picture in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't see it. Uh, and then big surprise, the PS5 logo was revealed during CES. Uh, mm-hmm. So we still don't know what the console actually will finally look like. Probably find out at E3. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, someone already made a little video where they uh, they opened a Photoshop, hit delete, delete the four, put in the five. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, who cares? Um, are you going to change the font ever? No, probably not. I thought maybe you could, because the S already looks like a five, mm-hmm. just do two of them. It looks like <laughs> well, or or I, yeah, a V. I saw one where it, they just made it say piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's only slightly revealing though, and I do think the naming convention of the Xbox is shitty. But it still seems like they're doubling down as like Xbox is just going to be this brand identity, and yeah. it's going to be whatever. PlayStation Five does seem like their intention is to just build another box, and then that'll be the n- next box that you have for a couple years. Whereas Xbox seems like. They're like, we're only going to build boxes for as long as we need to. I and think then eventually everyone else is just going to be on a service that provides them with games. I'd reckon that the PS5 will be the last of the sequential naming convention because PS6 just feels, it feels messy. It feels like PS5 feels like, okay, you have five generations of the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Now we move on to something new. That's a good number. I think, I, I don't see a PS6 happening. The game station. Or <laughs> we, what do you live at? The experience I don't, I don't PlayStation sixty four. Oh <laughs> wow! Now do you guys remember that. the commercials in the nineties for the PS nine or whatever? I do. It was? He sniffs it. He does like a, he does a rail, and then he's just like, "Take me away." I thought it was like a weird orb. Thing. Yeah, no, I don't know if you can find that, Omar. But there's the there's a commercial like he he inhales the console. <laughs> I remember what you're talking about where there's yeah. an orb and it's like, blah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah. Because Sony was like insane. In a because around the PS two came out, they're like. All right, let's try some fun stuff. And it got crazy. And then PS3 got even weirder where they got that like alien girl to do the weird commercials. And then they had the weird 
uh, PSP ad where it was like a black woman holding a white woman or vice versa. And they're like, which one are you? Because they were trying to sell a white Vita. Jesus. What? It, it, it was like an ad that was up in Germany. Like, that's racist. Cool. Are racially insensitive. Yeah, look at it. He's going to inhale it. There it is. Like the PS. Oh. It was Sony almost mocking itself because they were calling it the PS2. And they're like, we'll just call it the PS. Like, what if in the future it's called the PS9? Oh, yeah. But we're getting pretty close. <laughs> Did he oh, no. He's, he had a brain inside his brain. Mm -hmm. And then he kills himself. <laughs> this is cool. that Ryan Reynolds movie. <laughs> Which one? The new one? Free free man. Oh, I was thinking free, about free guy. The, the man who is free. The, I thought you were talking about the uh, Michael Bay one. I haven't seen it. Heard of the Six character. Underground. Six Underground. <laughs> okay. It's not good. Um, we're talking about more about some CES stuff going on. But first, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, Bespoke. This winter, start a new routine to upgrade your everyday life with a monthly box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to celebrate an occasion with a champagne saver or toast a perfectly aged winter cocktail, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. They have a bunch of cool looking boxes. You can find those online, easily to look at. Uh, we enjoy the Weekender over here. Uh, a lot of people actually have that little bag. I see them walking around with it. I've seen them out in the public too. People traveling around the world with that cool little thing. There's also Aged, another little box that I like. It's a cool little fancy drinking set. Uh, I got these little things that go inside there and they age the alcohol and you can also like spin it around. Kind of cool. Uh, so to get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. No pressure. Each box costs only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Sounds like a deal for you. So get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code DUDE at checkout. That's D-U-D-E. That's boxofawesome.com. Code DUDE for 20% off your first box. So thank you, Bespoke. All right, moving on back to uh, CES stuff. Yeah, so Sony, I think we're going to hear a lot more from them uh, at E3, obviously. They did finally come out. Finally, at the end, they came out with a uh, electric car concept. Oh, yeah, a weird. really? Yeah, yeah. So the Sony's getting into the EV game. If you're, okay. uh, I don't know, your next car is probably going to be a probably yeah. electric vehicle. Uh, a, a well, I was curious, of some kind. What does the steering wheel of the Sony car look like? It's a normal steering wheel. It, no, it's oh. it's got the ones that are have the racing handles. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a giant PlayStation controller. Oh wow! Um, Except in your thumb slips off and you crash. <laughs> It, it's it's nothing really exciting, but actually, Omar, if you want to bring up uh, towards the end of that that doc I sent you, if you go down to the Mercedes future car, oh. if James, if I, if I don't I, understand, none of these look like the Plymouth Prowler. Were we wrong to assume that's what wrong. the future would look there like? Was a, there was a movie that came out in 2009. It was the biggest movie of that year, possibly one of the biggest movies of all time. Minority Report. Close. Avatar. Would you oh. ever anticipate that that hit movie would? Uh, Inspire a car. Oh, it, that's for aerodynamics. It is the Mercedes Avatar. Okay, as they are Why calling it. Why isn't the Avatar? <laughs> I mean, I would love to drive some of these <laughs> things. I mean, it's I, no they, brainer. They said it came out and it has those wheels that can spin in any direction, so it can like move perpendicular. Oh, and that I, I mean, it sounds goofy, but could you imagine parallel parking by just going sideways? Oh, yeah. I mean, if it doesn't have the Professor Gadget Man. wheels, I'm not interested. Uh, I feel like it must have been so fun making that. It's like, you can do whatever you want to. Right. Here's $5 million. Well, they, said, they gave him a bag of cash and said, you could either throw this away or build a car. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same thing no matter but what. But like... This well, one inspires your dreams. Your head's mm. right you're not supposed to, to. You're not supposed to... If you took that out <laughs> and you hit a speed bump, you'd go through the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the beauty of all these concept cars. Yeah. <laughs> that is right next to the roof. Yeah. I mean, none of the... It's like the Cybertruck and all that stuff where it's like, none of this stuff is going to make... They still have to go through regulation process and stuff. This is more of I like, mean, we're just trying to give you an idea. The future there was that the picture brand. of the Cybertruck on the road in yeah. LA. Oh, really? Yeah, it's yeah. driving around. Well, I'll eat my hat. Uh, but speaking of steering way. wheel, uh, there's a part in this thing where the, the steering column is this like nipple in the middle of the car. I love it. What? And it, it's supposed to breathe with your heart rate. I love it. It's oh, like at I Disney World when we flew on those. Yeah. Yes. And they were breathing between our thighs. Which was the, <laughs> there's the Avatar ride. Is that it? Uh, That's, yeah. It's, 
Oh, there's a whole saying, screen in there. I thought you were going to say is a nipple that you sit on and it <laughs> sinks with your body. With your butthole. Yeah, again, I always love That's when the things, when of. South Park is always right about stuff and right. they're like, oh, it's the Wonder Wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, you put the thing in your butt and then your mouth and you're controlling it like that. It's getting closer. And then, man, I it, love this stuff. There, it's just a giant monitor in the middle of the, I don't know. It, I just I thought it was funny when I looked at that thing. I was like, this thing looks like it's made by a psychopath. It's inspired by Avatar. It's like weird. <laughs> what a weird thing to say in 2020. It runs The Witcher 3 also on the yeah. Instagram console. Uh, when I, I watched this video, I believe this is uh, from The Verge. who has been doing some excellent reporting. I've been watching all their stuff. But they're saying like, like Avatar is pretty popular in pop culture. I'm like, is it? <laughs> I think the entertainment industry has agreed that Avatar is popular. No, they told us it's going to be popular, and it was popular, and it has to be popular. I think, but I'm just saying, it's going to be one of those things where there's enough financial incentive for Avatar to be a big thing that it will be, regardless of what we care. Also, when we went to Disney World and we came back, and all I was just constantly getting served with Google stories because they knew I was there about theme parks. Avatar Land is the most popular part of any theme park in the world, apparently. Really? In terms of population density and the number of Crazy. foot traffic that goes there, everyone's going to Avatar Land. Everyone's riding the flight of the Nav passage of flight Navi ride more than any other ride. Do you guys just, think the movies are going to be awesome? <laughs> There's I no, don't know. I feel well, like they, like if they don't make a billion dollars each, they're going to be seen as failures. Are they yeah. which I think is interesting. All in production concurrently? Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. Cause. We're going to get them whether we like them or not. I, feel I don't like, like having a choice. Well, we this, hadn't reached the like oversaturated like creative market that we're in now where there's just so much stuff to look at, so many spectacles, so many things. That wasn't the case in 2009. Peter Jackson must look at the production of the Avatar movies and get hives. Because he's... <laughs> hives on his he hives. Gets, he gets dragged into the, these year-long production, or years-long. My theory, and this is an easy theory to do, I'm going to be one of those people where all I have to do is say things and go, told ya, because mm -hmm. it's easy to do. Um, but I think the second movie is actually going to be really good. It's going to be... But it's going to be pretty well-received, but it's not going to make nearly as much money because most people will have forgotten about Avatar. But we got that first one out of the way, made a bunch of money, did its thing, and now he's like, "We're gonna make it good. We're gonna hone it. We're gonna focus. We got Jermaine Clement in it. It's like there's gonna be a lot of good actors in it. So I think Taika Waititi might. No, he's so not. Do you think that the, the marketing budget must be fucking blowout, right? I like, mean, oh yeah, for the they first one, it, the first one it was. I don't all know. of Disney Plus profits from this year are going towards marketing. <laughs> They're gonna remake the video game. <laughs> <laughs> on the Wii. Or, I, I mean, know. I guess it came out on everything They're going to sell else. their yeah. own little breathing thigh thing so mm -hmm. you can wear I, it at home. I, I, I'm, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I feel like most people saw that movie, almost immediately forgot about it after they saw it. They spent their $72 on the movie ticket because it was in 3D. And stuff. it made its billion dollars. We all walked away. So I think when this new one is going to come out, they're like, oh, that, ugh, ugh, I don't like this. I, like, why am I going to go see that thing again? I already saw it once. Except that when you're waiting in line to do Passage of Flight, when you come around that corner and there's a giant animatronic Navi and a test tube, everyone's freaking out. Someone got kicked out of our ride because they skipped ahead in the line because they wanted to rush to take a picture of it, mm -hmm. and then they but they cut in the line to do it, and then the, someone oh. came and got them. And like you got no, you're you're out. It it feels like so we like James saying we went to Disney World. They have if you go to the Animal Kingdom area, which doesn't have much as Dino Land USA and now it, Avatar, it, which is well, great. Well, it also has a Bugs Life. 3D for now until they gut that shit. What? I mean, it uh, also has a really cool tree with a lot of really cool animal wood carvings. Animal Kingdom's great. Animal Kingdom yeah, is great. It is great. It's greater now that it has Avatar. But it, it feels weird. It feels like you're in a movie where there's this property called Avatar that's really popular exists because you go to the store and it's all oh, yeah. Avatar toys. You're like, this <laughs> like is all Turbo Man. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this feels made up. Yeah. We're like, like you can Avatar yourself, and there's a kid sitting in a chair. And they're like, we're scanning you in now. You'll be a tall, blue, ugly cat. <laughs> like, no one wants this. It just, it feels all very forced and made up. But like you said, we went on that ride and they, they you fly through Pandora and you see parts that you've never seen in the movies, like the ocean. You see these like giant whale-like creatures. And we walked away and said, I'm pretty hyped for Avatar 2. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to be like, but if it looks anything like that and my, my thighs breathe. I'm going to see it in 3D. Is I Sam, love 3D. Is Sam Worthington in them? 
Sam Worthington's not allowed near movie sets anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. What happened? But they genu- found out genuine he can't question, ask. Oh. Is he in them? I'm, I don't know. Well, they Cameo. could recast him because, I mean, his body's gone. And none of us can remember what he looks like. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, we're so mean. Right. I, his, I was, his human body If he body wanted to come to Funhouse, I would love him to come to Funhouse. He's not Make a video with us. Care. Sam. He doesn't care. He's Sam, in a you're welcome. He delivered your lunch house. today, and you Sam, didn't say anything. He's, you're welcome he's here anytime. Wealthy. Adam, you know, he, what, yeah. you know what I... all the Of the Titans movies. <laughs> you know what I'm looking for, Adam? What's that? I'm looking for a new pair of pants. Well... Can you help me out? I can get the outside of them for you. <laughs> I like that you're looking at my dog. Uh, <laughs> so there were a bunch of press conferences during... CES, and uh, one of them was Samsung, who showed off, who makes more than phones and uh, TVs, mind you. They also make exoskeletons. Okay. They make uh, gems. Mm-hmm. Which Call is, them robot pants like we <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us. They are the robot pants. So last year, they introduced the gems exoskeleton, which is the gate enhancing and motivation system. Oh, motivation. Mm-hmm. You're and, doing great. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it used to be a... Whoa, cool. Yeah, it, are, are the glasses part of it? Yeah, yeah they're augmented reality. Uh, during the stage demo, there was like a 3D avatar. It's like, get going, faster. And then one, one's like, that was really hard. It's like, yeah, I made it harder for you. The, the only thing the glasses Weird. change is when you look down, it doesn't make you feel stupid because it makes those go invisible. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> um, the idea is that the exoskeleton is supposed to help the sort of like, you know, the the less abled, able to get around a little bit more, a little helpful, but it's also now resistive. Because <laughs> oh. I don't think they could, I don't know if it has enough battery juice to help you, but either way, we're all going to be death stranding now. Well, we're going to be delivering packages in our robot pants. I thought they already had these in Japan for like elderly people. Uh, there was that guy in the season of Silicon Valley who had like the seat. Oh yeah. <laughs> you saw that, like you can have a chair anywhere you sit. I saw mm-hmm. some guy, some videos about people who like Amazon is for Amazon factory workers, mm-hmm. and it's like an exoskeleton that they wear so that way they don't destroy their shoulders constantly raising and putting stuff mm-hmm. in. But what they don't know is they're machine training that exoskeleton right. to where there doesn't have to be a You're human. You're probably setting, right. It's just yeah. the exoskeleton. You go yeah, for right. a bathroom break and you can look back and it's still, <laughs> still going. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry, Dave. I'll take care. Or of it this. looks back at you and then it just stops and goes. I mean. <laughs> Um, the, yeah. the sad thing is we're at a point as, in a society where all this technology is really cool. I mean, God, it's going to help so many people. No one's going to be able to afford this. Um, you're maybe gonna eventually. Gouged. No, you're going to because it's going to be a medical device. It's, you're um, going to get gouged well, out of your life. You're basically going to have to sell your soul. Well, James, it's pivoted away from the medical aspect to a workout aspect. Yeah, that's now, that's what now, it was sold as last yes, year. Last year it was introduced as, oh, this could be an assistive living uh-huh. work. Uh, yeah. uh, a device for infirm people or just people that that need assistance. Now it's a, you get your it's, glutes fired up. Uh, this is just, it's an assistive wearable exoskeleton for essentially serving as an at home gym. Yeah. Oh. Does that All make right. you happy? Well, so I think what so happened needs to be affordable. Peloton bikes are twenty eight hundred dollars. <laughs> well, I think I think what happened within the last year they were testing it. And they're like, well, it's not helping. It's really hard. Actually, it keeps locking up. And someone's a marketing guy went. <laughs> Wait, I no, I mean, what, I, what it's about not a bug? I, it's a feature. Exactly. I would say probably what happened is someone designed this. Some MIT student with high hopes of changing the world designed this and said, if we do this, we can have nurses in in old folks' home carry people to their beds and help them use like everything. And then someone who has bad knees, they can put this on and go out to work. And then they looked at the chart of how much each one would cost, and then how much this person had, how much money this person has. And they said, no one will ever be able to afford these useful, helpful items that could change their lives. And they said, let's just say it's a luxury mm-hmm. item and say it's workout equipment. It's most- could you imagine a 90-year-old man competing in a decathlon? Because he's got that? Because he's got the exoskeleton. Maybe. Hmm. You ever see the videos of the really old guys run, like doing sprints? No. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like, like, do they look healthy? Is it funny? I mean, it's not funny, but it's like it's still, still old men mm-hmm. doing athletic endeavors. But it's like this old man's like, all right, he's gonna run hundred meters, and it's a sprint, and he's like ninety eight or something. Jeez. He just gets there and he just he just kind of trots himself across, and then he's like, I need to sit down. <laughs> that was all the energy that I had stored up for the mm-hmm. next six months. Was it I mean, Robert De Niro and the Irishman? It was Robert As a thirty year old Robert <laughs> yeah. De Niro. Uh, we'll talk about some more things at CES, but first, let's hear from our sponsor, Stitch Fix. Looking good helps you feel good, and a quick way to take care of that is to improve what you wear. Now, listen. I would love to change my face, my hair, 
this grotesque hump on my back, but I can't. You know what I can do though? I can get some new attire and press those damn gargoyles. Always hanging out with me. That was a joke that didn't land. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that delivers your favorite clothing brands right to your door. To get started, go to stitchfix.com slash dude soup. Just answer some questions about your preferred style and your personal shopper will ship a box of clothes, shoes, and accessories right to you. With Stitch Fix, everyone can look their best. They have a solution for men, women, and kids all over the US and now in the UK. Look at that. There's no commitment required and you only pay for what you keep. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free. Plus the $20 styling fee is automatically applied towards anything you keep from your box. You'll never have to think about looking good again with Stitch Fix. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash dude soup and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash dude soup. Stitchfix.com slash dude soup. Thank you very much, Stitch Fix, for your sponsorship. Man, so another thing going on right now, at least I know this excites you. Fake meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you eat the most meat out of anyone here Rawr. at this table. Do you? I don't know. She eats a lot of potatoes. She's chicken. the most processed meat. And yeah. much like the hungry Irish uh, brethren before you, you eat potatoes. I, I love burgers. Um, but I also love the environment. Mm -hmm. So occasionally I do eat an impossible burger. Yeah. I admire people that uh, supplement or replace their diet with uh, these replacement foods that you know aren't as impactful on the environment or save animals. Personally, that's hard for me to do because I love meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at CES, Impossible introduced their newest product, which is a plant-based pork product. Yeah, and uh, I think this impacts no one at this table more than Omar, who's an actual vegetarian, mm. who can finally eat a pig again. Happy for you, bud. I'm I'm excited. Like. This stuff makes me feel like I'm real close to getting Cuban sandwiches back, which is something I Well, I, I at the wondering. end of this month, they're introducing a sausage as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have like, there's good chicken out there. There's good beef with the impossible, in the burger. There's good burgers. And there's not really good mm -hmm. like beef, beef. But yeah. What I want to know. Chicken and now pork. Why are they doing it off of <laughs> animals that we can eat there's already? A, sorry, there's mean? a Burger like, King commercial playing. That's the, that's the only. <laughs> Way to, I think they're eating the impossible word. That's the only way to win over the. Yeah, game. but g g what if it was like it's iguana? Like dragon. It should be like dragon. Yeah, right. Dragon. Like meat, meat Unicorn. doesn't exist, or like Mars worm. Which I bought what they claimed was unicorn poop at from a store. It was just was it rainbow time ice travel cream. Mart and it was rainbow ice cream. That sucks. Oh. Yeah. And when you ate it, you went ew. But right. you liked it's it? Poop. Yeah. Well, what oh. if what if unicorn poop tastes exactly like rainbow ice cream? Rainbow sherbet, yeah. Maybe That's it the was. the implication. Maybe it was. So, unicorn. like, maybe you did have it. They were like, they're like, no one's going to believe that it was actually unicorn yeah. poop, but it was. Um, but, I mean, in terms of impossible stuff, I feel like. Well, it's possible. That, well, yes, it's possible. But I feel like if fast food restaurants could cut out. Like, if it could save them money in the long run, if they could cut out the whole animal thing and they could just grow everything they needed for their restaurant in a factory and not have to worry about any of that stuff and do it all in-house, I think they'd be down. Oh, yeah. So, wait, the restaurant, you think, has the lab in the back where they're growing the fake... You know, or it's across the street. Well, I mean... It's like a Willy Wonka-type factory. <laughs> McDonald's, uh, if I recall, end of last year, changed and said all their chicken is going to come from... Cage free, I do chicken. remember this. like all their eggs sure. and all their it's chickens. Because they're all grown in test tubes. Well, no, no cages. I mean maybe, but like they they basically said we're not going to do the thing where it's a it's a thousand chickens on top of each other in one cage, like oh. killing each other and having a chicken their party. Mm. It's like it's like we are going to commit to actually having. It's not entirely humane because sometimes cage free doesn't necessarily mean they're living their best lives out in the fields, mm -hmm. but uh, it's better than the Didn't walls of free. walls of cages that that billions of chickens are crammed yeah. into so but i do think they were like when that happened they were like well they buy 20 percent of the chickens and all of the all of north america this is going to have an effect so i do think that these as these major fast food chains kind of like pick up on things i still we still haven't necessarily solved a nutrition issue though what's that we're gonna it, it doesn't matter if it's vegetarian doesn't mean healthy mm -hmm. meat carnivore doesn't mean healthy 
like it's so we still haven't solved the nutrition issue. There's still a nutrition gap. Make impossible impossible burgers good. aren't specifically healthier for you by nature of them being vegetarian. It means that vegetarians can have something that tastes and is flavorful that's something that is probably also not good for you. Mm -hmm. So what about them? We've talked about this before, mm -hmm. I think, in videos, but for people watching anew, can you explain what about them doesn't make them healthy? Because some people just, I do think, equate yeah, plant-based with they're, healthy. They're marketed as being healthier, and they are plant-based, but you use they use a lot of fats and other chemical processes. So you cook to them in oil. Oils or, and stuff yeah. to get the texture and get the flavor and taste. And if you get an Impossible Whopper... Like it's still covered in cheese and bread well, and yeah. mayo and everything, ketchup, sugar. Yeah. So mm. it's also not Sounds like good. also once it probably becomes <laughs> mainstream and they're like, oh, we need to serve, you know, a million of these a day in Southern California alone. They're not they're probably going to find ways to cut corners on these things. So, it. yeah, it'll taste like pork, <laughs> but it may not be any better for Chinese you than newspapers. pork. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mm. I'm waiting for the thing where we can solve the nutritional gap. And people can start getting things that are good for them mm -hmm. from a, in a sustainable way. Um, the argument right now, though, is in order to be healthy, it's kind of expensive. No, it, I just I completely disagree. Really? I think it takes a little bit of effort, I and no one wants to put in the. Effort. Oh, I said it's expensive. <laughs> well, it it's expensive. It's expensive time. <laughs> time. Mm -hmm. I think eating healthier costs about as much as going to McDonald's. But your time—that's a cost. Mm. You go to and. I have to get out of bed and put on clothes and go to a car. I have to no, chew you. my own food. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I I really am excited to see. I, I, I forget where the video was, but they looked into basically all the different places that lab grown meat mm -hmm. was from. Because that's also like I, I think at least for Omar. Omar, would you eat lab grown meat if it if there was no if they just grew a chicken breast? There's no animal coming to harm. You're talking about when they use, like, the clone piece or whatever? Yeah. They it's like make, they're they just like growing a, yeah. parts of mm -hmm. creatures without the creature ever living or having yeah. a brain or a heart or anything. How do you feel about that, Omar? I think, I think I'd be okay with it, actually. I, I think so. I asked someone recently this question, and they were, like, they were like, I ask vegetarians that, and they just, like, break. Like, they don't know how to answer it. So really? I'm glad you... You had conviction, Omar, and you were like, yeah, I'll eat that meat. Because mm -hmm. I, too, would eat that meat. Also, I love it. Yeah, also, <laughs> I, guess I, I hate to do this to you, Omar, but it was a real chicken. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. Because it really, for me, it comes down to, like, a lot of it is animal rights and, you know, like, taking care of the planet and stuff. But, like, a lot of it they is the sustainability of growing food in that way. Like, how expensive it is on the planet to create burgers and yeah. stuff like that. Like, as long as the lab-grown stuff is better for the environment, I think I'd be down for it. It takes 20 times the energy. <laughs> there, yeah, that's what, what I saw was that... It would be crazy out of out of scale for creating that yeah. stuff. Yeah. They actually uh, split, or I guess, uh, like, what was it? Combined uh, the genomes with a banana tree. So it was a banana tree, but it grew... Chicken a breast? bunch of chicken. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I almost... You had me for a little I bit. I thought you were going to... I was like, what are you talking about? The bad tree came to life. Here's <laughs> he sang songs. Well, I, I mean, in the in the videos, they were growing little tiny pieces of meat absolutely. in individual petri dishes, and it's like that's not sustainable. I feel like mm -hmm. the only way it would be is if they could grow like a banana bunch that's all just chicken breast or something like that, where it's like larger <laughs> quantities. Not not to be a Todd Phillips joker <laughs> about this, <laughs> but I always mention it anytime this discussion comes up. Because I think it's a gen. I don't have an answer. I don't expect anyone to have an answer, but I think it's a general point of discussion. Is that there is kind of a reality that as soon as we stop eating meat, chickens, cows, oh, they yeah. gone. They yeah. gone. There's gonna be like two right. of them in a in a zoo in in Singapore. Please leave their eggs. Gonna be it. Yeah, oh, you're like saying if we stopped eating them. eggs too? And I'm just saying if we stopped eating animals and we stopped eating gotcha. livestock, like. The, there's not going to be a, a fine. It'll be the same way we preserve other species in right. some ways, which again is probably better for those remaining species than being crammed into a factory and then getting a bolt in the brain. Mm -hmm. Like, but uh, it is one of those things where it's like, okay, well, you you're going to reduce that population considerably because there, you just have no use for them. Anymore. There's something cool and futuristic. Like, so when when the year 2000 came along, I think all of our brains went. Flying cars, jetpacks, smart tech, like 
No, it, it, it was more in the past than ever. Mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't until like, you know, smartphones and the advent of, you know, broadband, everyone getting being like starting to feel a bit more futuristic. So 2020, my hope is once it'd be really cool when you go by and you see this giant white building and you're like, the hell is that? And they're like, oh, they grow meat there. It's the farm. Yeah. Here you go. That's kind of futuristic. It's and like FRM. Yeah. The farm. <laughs> I'm just going to eat my clones. <laughs> That's good. Makes well, you that, I mean, that would be ethical if you cloned yourself and then killed yourself and ate yourself. It's the only ethical. Story. Get rid of the evidence. Yeah. <laughs> but how much energy does it take up? Like, is it going to be more for me to drive down the road and get a mick mick then to eat my clone yeah. yeah then to murder yourself yeah also <laughs> consume am, I, your am, own I gonna, corpse? am i gonna be wasteful am i gonna be like the native americans where i eat every part of my clone yeah well you make bone broth <laughs> okay like i wear the yeah. teeth but i don't want to eat the tumors <laughs> <laughs> there's so many <laughs> also when you kill your clone you have to do it with a bag when you put a mm -hmm. bag over the clone's head <laughs> yeah. and hold it in the back because that's how you preserve like the a weird meat. naked uh -huh. choke so then you see you see your own face going yeah <laughs> <laughs> There's some, yeah, you have to, it has to be the exact scene from the girl with the dragon tattoo. Mm -hmm. Where you play Enya, mm -hmm. and you, you're, you're yeah. in your little Swedish basement. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I thought it was you had to keep eye contact so that you got that part of your soul back. Oh yeah. So you have to yeah. look at it while Souls you're killing, so the soul comes back. I, Souls I've, aren't real. I have been told that bison is better for you because it is a fearless animal, and so when you kill a cow, when it dies of fear. It releases like toxins oh, into its yeah. body but because bisons will just run you over, and when they die, they die angry. Oh yeah, my clones will die strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to eat fear. You want to eat strength. I'm not a nutritionist, but I'm gonna say that's not why bison is better for you. <laughs> I'm gonna say probably because they're a more active animal because they aren't so mass produced, mm. and because what they eat to survive is not. Do they talk about processed the brain? <laughs> okay, nerd. yeah, that was a big uh, TED talk they had about <laughs> eat yourself. Bison. Oh, um, we're almost through all the the CES stuff. So what we all we talked about was magic pants, mm -hmm. future cars, and Bold pork sandwiches. Clones. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was there's uh, a ball that future? follows you. Oh, yeah, it was that's like not going to come out ever. No. Uh, I feel like every six months there's a new Kickstarter of like this robot will do whatever you want. It's like that's a lie. They're, one day, one day we'll get robots. So. I saw a video of a guy's luggage following him through an airport. So. I saw that too. What were we watching? It was. I mean, you probably saw. What were we watching? It was on Twitter. You probably saw a GIF on Reddit. Yeah, or it something. was a GIF on Reddit or yeah. Twitter. I feel like it was something. I mean, it was it was found for or you know, it was just someone with their iPhone filming this dude. Yeah, like it wasn't a oh, presentation. Okay, yeah. or anything. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was a Kickstarter. Like mm. all these lies. That are announced. Well, and there is those out. segues that do that. It's probably put something on that. Yeah. You know, those little segue robots. How lazy you are you? Until you step on the, carry your own bag. That TV that was announced last year that's supposed to come out this year that rolls in on itself and it's sixty thousand dollars projected. There's, there's that and the modular TV. Eight K is a thing. Wow. Can as you soon play as you the set video. It. What video is that? I want to see what's playing on the TV. It's it's just a rear projection of what's behind. By it. By the way, Adam, you just asked what. The, like how lazy you have to be to not have your own luggage. Uh -huh. But it used to be you'd have a handle and then you'd walk through a place carrying your luggage and they said, no, no, no. Wheels. Let's put wheels on it. And then <laughs> someone just... said, well, we have two wheels and then a handle. And they said, no, 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 no. Let's put four wheels so you can just float it around the airport <laughs> with one like... finger. So It's like, uh, okay, the TV rolls up into that thing. But then mm -hmm. when you don't have the TV out, it's just... It's a beautiful a view of that. Yeah. I mean, sure, if Arizona. you have a great view. It's going to get covered in bills. and If you've got a great <laughs> view behind it, yeah. I love, I I love the idea of like. The TV's going to come out. And yeah. <laughs> I, well, like I the, want. the realistic person's home where they just yeah. throw all their shit on it. Just, uh, <laughs> no. You put it with the wall like that behind uh -huh. it. But then there's a uh, naked portrait of you. Oh. So you're like, you guys want to watch some TV? It's like, no, no, all right, I'll turn it off. And then it slides down and it's, <laughs> you know, it reveals your naked body. I did watch a little bit of LG's press conference <laughs> from this year. This this foldable TV thing is from last year. Yes, yeah. Um, but they were talking about, they did a picture where they said, here's HDR. And it's like, boo, ew. And then they're like, here's LG Ultra iSync IQ. Better and it's like brighter and ooh, nicer. And so mm -hmm. now we're poo pooing HDR, which used to be uh, the selling point. Yeah. So, yeah. They also, on all these CES things, they're like, you know, the colors and like the blacks are truly black, but it, you're watching it through your shitty like mm -hmm. laptop yeah. monitor. You're going, I have to trust my guests. I know. Like, until well, someone can crawl into my TV like the ring, yeah. I will not be able to see <laughs> the, the quality that's being, because my, I mean, the human eye can only. See so well. Well, they 
they sell you on these features, hard cut to your grandmother or mother, somebody getting the TV, watching Channel 4 SD with motion smoothing on. Yep. Carrying and, your luggage. Yeah. <laughs> it's a four by three image stretched out to six by. They go, 4K looks good. Mm-hmm. I like this. Uh, on, the, on that note, though, Elise, of talking about things that can actually pop out of your TV, uh, I believe it was Acer. Uh, it doesn't really matter. NVIDIA, someone announced the eighth. Monitor that's 360 hertz. So we're now at the 360 frames per second. Okay. The human eye cannot detect it in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> but it's there, and we will believe that it is running that fast, and apparently it improves your flick shots by 4%. Wow. Wow. It will cost- Flick shots. It will cost, uh, the price, how much money you got? Get it to Ninja. Uh, it costs that much. Okay. Yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, the other thing I thought was interesting, there seems to be a, a bit of a trend. Uh, everyone's trying to make your device, whether a PC or phone, into a Switch. Already did it, Ouya. Nice. Wait, what? Early adopter, founder. Yeah. Nice. Booyah is actually a smaller Xbox Series X, if you think about it. True. Yeah, so there's this bad boy. This is a concept from Alienware. It's a massive phone that that person has. <laughs> Not a phone. This is a, a basically a laptop crammed into a handheld. Okay. Uh, Alienware has created this thing that is essentially a Switch knockoff, uh-huh. but it's their sort of them trying to get into the hmm. the PC the, yeah. or sorry, the, the poor, poor, yeah, poor so you console could theoretically market. get Steam on this. And just, it is a, it's running it's Windows a 10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm interested. Well, but how powerful is it? They laptop wouldn't say. Powerful. It's laptop s- power. No, I don't think it's laptop powerful. <laughs> it is, uh, it on is, my yeah. Razer, I'll open, I'll open Google Docs and the fan will go. <laughs> so what's going to happen when I play Rocket in, League? In this video, once again, uh, check out the Verge's coverage. Uh, yeah, they, they they do a part where they just play the fan noise, and it is so loud. <laughs> oh, really? Because, yeah, yeah. That, it's sort of the, the the idea of, like, ARM architecture versus x86 and these other things. That's like you're trying to pull less from the CPU, you're trying to be less power hungry. I imagine this is like when the AVA gets unplugged and the timer starts running down, that once this thing's on dock, it's just like, kill me, kill me, kill yeah. me. Nice reference, nerd. Whatever. We're talking about CES. Get off my dick. I have a. I have. Don't fight you guys. I've never <laughs> talked to you guys together. about. I know you guys. Everybody makes fun of Stadia, and currently, yes, it's a joke. But we have reached a point where the internet is basically ubiquitous, and I have a feeling that we will reach a point where it is uh, not a service but a utility mm-hmm. that is provided, like PiperNet, like PiperNet, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. where it's. Available everywhere, not just in cities, um, to the point where Stadia will make sense. Mm-hmm. And also just anything to where all we would actually need is displays. I we won't need... disagree. You do? It's just because I think the, right now there's the discourse happening that un, that internet access is not a universal human right. That's because these companies want to maintain control. I'm so... John... I'm going to have to respectfully disagree. Did you, you challenge me? I, I Wait, you're saying it's not a human right? Well, I'm no. saying that the, the powers that be that control yeah, yeah, money, yeah. that control technology. I mean, technology. well, yeah, that's the thing is, is it going to, which way is it going to go politically? I think if you're mm. curious Let's about debate. whether or not you should fight, <laughs> if you're curious about Both whether or not me. you should fight for that future where the internet is a utility, um, Stadia is on the line. I would say, <laughs> I would say that yes, the internet should be a universal human right and tampons. Yeah. I can't Ooh, even no, use no, it. No, no, no. Like you don't want it. those two together. Yeah. Everyone can use internet. <laughs> Why would I want to give away a right that only fifty-one percent of the human population? <laughs> yeah, and that only half the country knows even what how what it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe even less. <laughs> what are tampons anyway? I, try, I tried to get like a. Like, because I feel like we all are generally on the same page. Um, like we all, it's a, we're usually all kind a, of in sync. It's usually an echo chamber. And I tried to get like a, but John. Well, let me oh. ask you this about tampons <laughs> while we're talking about it. Sure. Tampons <laughs> is a basic human right, but lots of women prefer wings, pearl, mm-hmm. bead, pink flow, tampons, whatever. Mm-hmm. What? Sheepskin what? Special brand, Special brands of tampons. Yeah, sponge. Oh, yeah, right? what if you had government so, so tampons? I was going to say, government tampons are going to be gray. Oh, okay, they're going to be saying, scratchy. I'm saying it's basically a gum you wrapper. have choice of government tampon, but then you can also choose... What? <laughs> your hair was yeah. wild in your yeah. you're going, you're tampons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm back at work after two weeks off, and 
Was I supposed to and intending to wash my hair before I came to work this week? Yes. Did I? No. Where's right. this going? Uh, anyway, I'm saying there's a, there's a government issued yeah. level of tampon, right? right. That yeah. everyone gets. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you can, if you want to buy the more luxurious tampons. Did we just figure out health insurance? Yes, we <sighs> did. You don't have to ever worry about going without tampons. But if you want to pay a little more into the system for yourself, Kami, Kami. to get better yes. tampons, yeah. you can. Nobody cares rate. about tampons. We all care about having one computer in your house that controls all the displays. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Is that a segue? I'm not segueing. I don't. I know. I know where John's brain is at because he recommended a book to, I believe, Omar and myself, the Nexus trilogy. Which is, I'm now you getting. Tell me about that too. I'm Why getting, didn't you recommend it to me? I'm getting. You know, a, I read all the time. You never come to the gym with me. He's right. You don't go to the gym. I haven't for months, but. <laughs> so anytime you, hey, anytime you want to go. Yeah, come on. You go Just to the same one out. as us. You always, always look over and you're grabbing your bike and you go, Oh no, I'm not going to the gym. That's, I'm just walking that. my bike out. I've never said yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I'm having an affair. I've, I've never said I've never said the words, oh no, I'm not going to the gym for the record. <laughs> I'm gonna recommend a book to you, the fifth season. And now if you don't read it, what is it about the future? Doesn't it's is fantasy? <laughs> I'm anyway, I'm sorry. A book no, 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 no. I, I wonder what the fifth Shogun. season's about. You know why I Oh come on. You'll have to read it to find out. It's what of the seventeen hundred page book. It's twelve hundred pages. Jesus it's just God. a world where there are there are different casts of people. That What's it called? Fifth the Element. <laughs> fifth season. Adam, what were you gonna say about John? And I'm I'm currently reading two books right now. The second in the Nexus trilogy, Crux, and my sister got me The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury, Ooh. which mm. I am now realizing my mom read to me as a kid because I'm like I've read all these stories before. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's weird. I didn't understand the African Velt when I first read it. But there it is. Felt. Are you saying Felt. that John's Felt. being incepted by these ideas? No, because the ideas are insane, but I know where his brain's at. I well, totally get it. Also, this is something that we didn't experience from the audiobook. I I had the the Kindle version, but then I ended up finishing it during a road trip. But at the end of the book, which one? In Nexus. Okay. Which is it's basically it's like about, you know, 15 years in the future, there's this OS that runs in your mind with nanobots or whatever. At the end of the physical book, there is an appendix that lists all of the real technologies that everything in the book is based off of. Because cool. the guy who wrote it is a venture capitalist in uh, the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley. And so he's funding all of these oh, future right. technologies that he then was like, all this stuff that exists now and that is being developed let's just fast forward 15 years based off of this stuff that is tangibly real. It's, so it's not, it's, it's less sci-fi. I mean, it is sci-fi 100%, but it's a very realistic projection of where the future could lead to. Yeah. Like in technology own propaganda. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Well, when you pitch it to me, it sounded like the worst idea in the world. Yeah. Cause you yeah. said, it's this mind guy, OS. He said, this guy got tired of explaining the future to people at parties. So he wrote a book about it. All right. I think it's cool. So, so I would love I, to I love it. that idea where they go, <laughs> people at a party go, what do you think the future's like? He goes, have you read my book? And they go, no. <laughs> he carries them sewed inside his yeah. jacket, um, sewn into the lapel. The idea is interesting. It is action as written by 16-year-old Adam. Yeah. Where he's like, and then you, Cade was so cool. He's the coolest guy. God, he's, his friend's a DJ too, also <laughs> hacker. <laughs> it's just like, he goes, and also, I can't write women, so uh, there's that. No That's man always, can. Yeah, it's always the woman is either a trophy or a sex object, mm -hmm. and it's always if it's a bad sign when there's a descriptor of the woman's breasts in the yeah. book. It, yeah, let me picture them. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, I just I, these are where these are the details we're hanging out on in the book. Tampons are free. I don't remember that part. Must be science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> So that's our book of the month club, uh, Illustrated Man. Great book. Ray Bradbury, still not dead yet. Surprise. I'm listening to The Future by author name Forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading Shogun, which is about uh, 1600 Japan. Nothing written, has happened in the book. And written, I am by, written by a white guy. <laughs> James Cladwell. Well, that's Caldwell. like Memoirs of a Geisha, which has been described by scholars as like one of the most genuine and realistic accounts of geisha culture and history in Japan written by a white man, white American man. Yeah. Hey, mm. do your yeah. research and it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. 
You can uh, have any cultural experience bad take. you want after a little trip to the library. Yeah. Uh, Shocker on Shock Street, written by a white guy. I uh, had some other stories here. Probably don't really have time to get to them. Uh, speaking of Stadia, Google's uh, Google's little platform there, Destiny 2's population has dropped more than half. So, so much for your future, John. Uh, and then I had a little story. Just, just I wanted to hit the nail on the head that we have picked the wrong career paths. I knew that. I yeah. Mean. Apparently, we should be, uh, A, younger, weirder, and famous because TikTok's where it's at, and we missed the boat. I'm Listen, sorry. If I... I'm a TikTok pro. I could bring us into the TikTok generation. Just say the word. I'll do it. You can do it if you want to. Mm, it's too much work. Yeah. Right. Uh, at least I actually, I, I saw that on our subreddit. Someone's like, here's a link to their TikTok. Uh, Fun House's TikTok account said, we have one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can't log into it. Darn. Perfect. Wonderful. We did it. Yeah. Who has the login? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, here So what's the story oh, yeah, here? TikTok so is popular. popular than ever. Similar, so we don't have to talk about this one for too much. This girl but. in the red top did not realize she, if you can't see the lens, the lens can't see you, babe. Real quick, real quick. Here's a, right now, sorry for our audio listeners. How many of these but, are Jenners? Um, I want you guys to point out which one of these people has 17 million plus TikTok followers and all is of them. the most popular yeah. TikToker. Is that the dude with them? the earrings who looks like an extra from Lost Boys. Isn't it the one in the middle? Is it the girl who, hello, this is my first YouTube the do, video. The smirky looking dude on the left. Mm. Is it her? Is it You're him? all wrong. Is it's it the girl him? James pointed out in the beginning whose uh, who's face is covered. And I'm pretty sure, according to this article, she's dating the guy over there. Wow. Yeah. Also, notice how none of them are interacting with each other. They're all staring at their own phones. Yeah. Yeah. You're describing. It's a picture of kids. Yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, this is an article from the New York Times, but it's talking about how there's a gold rush in Los Angeles right now of famous TikTok stars buying up houses so they can all create content together. Mm. Uh, this is hilarious because it reminds me of something that happened with like the Minecraft gold rush where a bunch of Minecraft kids are moving into mansions together. And Vine. That happened with Vine too. Similar thing though. Similar to the story. They're like, a lot of them like to hang out by the pool. There's no furniture. There is a hammock. They have not <laughs> bought any yet. This stuff happened 10 years ago with the whole Minecraft houses. They all move into these mansions. They don't know what to do because they're, there's no I, parents there. I to love do anything them all. They're all. No, they're fantastic. They're all, I bless their, bless their hearts. I don't live in a mansion. I don't know what TikTok so, does or how you I make mean, money. Well, they don't live in the mansion. They just work there. They don't do go mean? in the pool because it's too cold. Uh, they're also, most of them, every single one of them is under drinking age. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, most famous and, TikTokers are between like 15 and 19. Yeah. Um, but if you ever, I don't know, if you ever want to like, oh, that's cool. Is he yeah. A cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his nose uh, hair. For the audio listeners, there is a guy with a cross tattooed on his tooth. Yeah. And he has a ton of nose hair. I mean, people have nose hair. Yeah. yeah. But he thought he looked yeah, cool in that picture is the difference. Yeah. What? Nose hair's cool. That girl's got great hair. <laughs> anyway, we'll, got great we hair. will, uh, we'll link out to the story. <laughs> Is the that their uncle of, right there? Who's that guy with the fedora? No, that that's their <laughs> old... Is it TikToker? Yeah, that's their... He's 23. <laughs> he's, he's a viner. Yeah, he's he's retired. The grandpa of the group. He's the mature yeah. one. He, go, he goes, let me show you some of my old vines. And they go, oh... It's Venus? Um, so what... I don't understand. They don't live in the house? Four of them do. Uh -huh. James, ask me any they questions They just go the there story. to make content together. Yes, and you could only but go But they to, live somewhere else in LA. Or other parts of the world. And they, they come travel? and visit. Yeah, this is a way for them to collaborate and What's do TikTok. Okay. Also, they call themselves TikTokers. Oh, yeah, that that's her. That's the one that, this is my first YouTube video in the red top. She, she, what? she is one of the most she, famous TikTok yeah. people of all time. Why? What does she do? She does this. She, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> she does this. She is famous for her dance moves. <laughs> I I'm only, okay. I'm only, I have no enthusiasm for this story. Mm -hmm. I'm only giving you the information which I have read uh -huh. uh, because I thought this was like some sort of onion article or something fake, but we, I'm telling you, we missed the boat. Hold on, we did it so wait, wrong. Wait, but which one of them is supposed to be Cloud Strife? <laughs> wait, can that, we, can we go guy? to Charlie De Emilio's YouTube? There's only one video and it's just her talking and moving her arms. I don't know if we have time for it. You can pull it up um, while we do that. So you can read that article if you want to kill yourself. Uh, or want to kill yourself. You know, you want to feel bad about yourself. Don't I hate do that. that. I hate that I'm burdened with this, like, desire to make, th like, put thought into things. 
Mm-hmm. Not to diminish what they do. I'm not. I'm not the kind of person who's going to go like TikTokers. They're just TikTokers. They're clearly doing something that's resonating with an audience, and they're building that audience, and they're that's very, they're very, very, very responsible flowing, right? about what they are doing to continue maintaining that audience, and it's made them a lot of money. Maybe we're too cynical. But there that's she the is. This I, is her saying, is, "Welcome to my YouTube channel." <laughs> I, I don't even. <laughs> I don't even tweet because I'll think of something and I'll go, no, this uh, this isn't worth it. Mm-hmm. This isn't worth it. Right. So. Um, well, I've, I, I mean, do we, can I just, do we have time? For, Say whatever you want. I've found TikTok, so I missed the boat on Vine. And oh, then man, I Vine, Vine came and went. I loved it. And it was great, but I missed the boat on it because I was like, screw that. Because mm-hmm. um, when I, I, I went to go look for stuff, it was all just annoying things. I didn't dig deep enough to find you all the good stuff. didn't find mine. So, TikTok is an awesome uh, platform specifically for like meme generation mm-hmm. because you pick a specific song and uh, basically these like little ideas will sprout up and then you can pick that song and say make a TikTok with this song and you will, you can like see a meme like planted and then grow mm-hmm. into all these different webs, all these different takes on the meme. You know, a lot of them bad, some of them good, and it's all, it's like you literally see it start and then grow and branch out into all these different. Because someone's tra- doing transformative on transformative on transformative. Yeah, on and, it, and it's like, and it's 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, and we see that on, you know, all other media platforms like Twitter and uh, YouTube I mean, and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, everything. We see it, but it's like with TikTok, because it revolves around picking this specific piece of media, it, you can see it like, you're literally, it's like putting a plant in a potter, cool turning on a UV it. light and staring at it, and you you literally watch it grow from this one yeah. location. It's so, like the telephone game yeah. for memes. TikTok is, is there's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of just little kids dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you, like, say not interested and you like the comedy stuff, like, I normally when I'm scrolling, I'll see stuff that makes me, like, belly laugh, like, mm-hmm. multiple times. Yeah. Well I just... I just don't know that I want, like, how, if I say I got TikTok, I'm probably not going to get TikTok, but say I got TikTok, is there a way for me to do it so that way I don't get 16-year-old dancing girls popping up every three seconds? Like, yeah. I want com, I, I want comedy You say TikTok, not interested. But not interested in what? Because I even have this problem with Google where it's like, like, it'll serve me a story of Victoria Beckham at a, at a has visited a jewelry store in South London or whatever, and then you'll go not interested and go. What doesn't interest you about this story? Oh, yeah, it and it'll go. It'll go jewelry stores, and I'm like, I mean, I guess, but I also don't care about Victoria Beckham stories I mean, either. You it, know, it is it, it is still where you have to go. Garbage scroll, garbage scroll, garbage scroll. Oh, this is a funny thing. It's and like garbage, 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 funny thing. It's like garbage, the garbage. effort you would put into online dating, except it's just to kind of consume media online. Mm. Yeah, I don't have mm. time for that. But well, I, I'm mm. I'm happy for everyone that's doing mm. it. Sure. Uh, well, I can't this, wait to die alone. I, you should I, try I, taking longer yeah. shits. I forgot to mention you this can. mansion is also called the Hype House. Uh, it's the brainchild of Chase Hudson, 17, mm. a TikTok star with more than 8 million followers who is known online as Lil Huddy. Good for him. Uh, and he has some advice for you, James, okay. and John, who apparently yes. wants to get into the TikTok game. <laughs> no. uh, according to him, you have to be young. You have to have a lot of energy and personality, and honestly, a little weird. The weird people get the furthest on the internet, Chase said. Either have to be talented at something, or weird, or a funny mix, or extremely good looking. And if you're all three, you're a TikTok god. Does, did the letters get smaller and smaller to represent the reporter walking away? My as brain was suffocating itself. <laughs> it was like you're in danger. You must. Yeah. You're in survival mode. Kill yourself. In in his defense, when we like get uh, not lectures, but when we get like oh performance stuff from YouTube or whatever, they're very formal. They send out these videos and they're like, here's how to succeed on YouTube. It's like be true. Be weird. Speak mm. with your own. It's all the same language and yeah. stuff. So mm. they're not. He's not wrong. Seventeen-year-old right. uh, Bedongles. What was his name? <laughs> he's not little wrong. Little Huddy. Little Huddy. Little Huddy. He's not wrong. So shut yeah. up. Little Soon he'll be Huddy, and then normal Huddy. This will all happen in the span of four years. And Huddy Junior. When he ages out. Come. I. We could have retired when we were in our twenties, but we we messed up. We. We came at the wrong time. We oh, came we in at the like, event oh, of YouTube. We should stay in school and learn. <laughs> Go to college. Yeah. Ah, why? Uh, but that's it for all the new stuff uh, this weekend on Funhouse coming up. At least put this all back together. The uh, Rooster Teeth core cast has joined us for an eye tracker video. 
fan favorite Jessica Vasami. Who? Mm. Will return. People loved her in our worst games mm-hmm. gameplay. She's back. Mm-hmm. We're making her look at men, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> packages. It's all just packages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then also we have a little gameplay that I believe John brought up. You have a drunk friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that, fun. A little early that access one, that game. That didn't go as planned necessarily. But well, no. Fun we cut around the misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> still doing that? Uh, there was another game. I don't. These are long ago. Internet Cafe Simulator. Yeah. When did we do that? We did that a couple I months ago. I edited that internet? like a month and a half ago. Yeah. My God. Yeah, 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 you are. I don't remember. Yeah, Ryan's in that. Maybe Adam's not in it. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. There's so many simulators know. and type of like computer simulators. I'm a, I forget what I'm in, what I QC'd, what I made a thumbnail for. I don't know. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we got a little gameplay from uh, GDC's 2016 Game of the Year, uh, The Witness. Um, <laughs> Matt Peake loves The Witness. Oh, yeah. Rightfully that, that, so. That is a game where you just play puzzles, right? Mm-hmm. You just do puzzles. Yeah. But then there's like a bigger... Well, Matt got stuck, and so he brought it in to (laughs) to try to get people to help him. (laughs) That's a great idea. I like that. Um, Yeah, is there anything else you guys want to mention going on on the channel? Anything that uh, is worth checking out? Uh, On the channel, I was just going to say, if you find yourself with a couple extra bucks, Red Cross Mm -hmm. and World World Wildlife Foundation can probably use your help right now. They don't do wrestling anymore. I know, okay. I know WWF, but okay. uh, yeah, but um, they could probably use your help right now. So uh, if you yeah. got a couple extra bucks, mm-hmm. feel free to toss something in. There's also, uh, you know, there's that lady selling nudes. So she's if, not you know, doing it. She's not selling her nudes yeah. anymore. Sorry. What's, I was gonna say she if you want to give your money like to Australia, you want to get some in the back. What's better for the environment? Her putting out nudes and making was it seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, or Chris Hemsworth just giving away a million? He gave a million dollars. Yeah. Just did? Gave, yeah. How much did you pay for his nudes? Way more. Than well, he never paid Australian taxes either. So. Ooh. <laughs> you think oh, this wow. is his way of getting around it? Smart, Chris. Well, he's lump sum. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> no, I mean, it's so crazy. Like, I mean, I. I what? Are well, we, the, just, I mean, the fire. It's okay. The, no. But this is, I was this just going to say, like, I saw a chart that showed the California. It was like all these fires we know about. And then. The Australian yeah. fires is like five times what the California fires was. Yeah. Where I saw like hundreds of firefighters. Dead. I read something that was like because it's eucalyptus trees too. There are so much fat. Oh. It's just it's just oh, oil it's burning, oil. and there, there's a video of trees exploding. It's horrible. It's madness. Yeah. There's this. Yeah. No. Uh, James is right though. If there's a. Uh, there's not a anyway. lot you can do financially. Yeah. There are some organizations that will would you, happily take your money and try and put. Would it you to volunteer? A good cause. What? what if what if the only way to put out the fire was you have to sacrifice your body? Like and how you, so? You come out like V for no Vendetta more on fire. But yeah. he got stronger than ever. Crap, V for right. Vendetta got stronger after he went into the fire. What if you could donate donate your muscles? <laughs> I would donate. Can, uh, yeah, muscles Thunder grow. Thunder, Thunder down muscles. under. You you rip them, the rip them off like Robbie Williams in that famous <laughs> music video that I watched Rock over the DJ. weekend. That's the one. I, I showed it to my sister and I was like, I was like, oh, hey, let's watch some like, we're trying to watch like good music videos. And I said, this one was banned. But like squint, you have to like look for it. It's censored, but yeah. Was it censored? Is yeah. that what it was? I, the MTV did that whole thing in the, the North American. Like, we'll show it once. A little bit higher up, whereas in the British version, it's lower, but they still blur his crotch. It's so comical. It's yeah, so it's, it's so joke. fake. It's a joke. It's so joke. Come on, he's a talent. anyway. He's a talent. Uh, so yeah, if you can walk away from this podcast with anything, it's to watch the Rock DJ uh, music video by Robbie Williams. I'm gonna say donate, but yeah. So wait, you guys saw Robin Williams' dick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening and watching, everybody. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, uh, especially on the audio side. Definitely helps us out. Tell a friend. Tell a couple friends. All that fun stuff. And we'll see you on the podcast next week, but we'll see you on the channel all the time. You can't look away. We're going to get Funhouse TV working someday, I promise. Maybe by now. We'll see. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 More together. So Because I really like those guys, and I think they like us. So, yeah, I mean, uh, IG was, like, very much a Lawrence... And yeah. like, pro- and it also happened a lot of some of that stuff that came together that allowed IG to come back under this umbrella was happening at the same time as Arizona.